Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's class. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer. Uh, could one of us please go ahead and uh, lead in prayer? Let's pray. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we are about to have. God, we pray that you will be with us and help us to open our mind and heart and listen to the deep truths that are being taught by Pastor Nancy. Help us to understand that Jesus, you are the God who teaches us, you are the God who fills us with revelation. But we pray that we will learn something new today and we can glorify you much more better in our life. I pray for a good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session. I pray for all my classmates over here and who are yet about to come. Be with us, guide us. We bless them all in your name. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, so we've been talking about apostolic ministry and uh, we're gaining a better understanding of what this ministry is all about we are gaining understanding about the office of a of an apostle and uh, i shared last time that the way we see a progression in the prophetic ministry a similar progression can be considered even in the apostolic ministry there are some people who are in the office of the prophet. However, in general, believers can be very apostolic. And we defined um, apostle. We said that apostle is he is sent from somewhere. Uh, or they are messengers or a greater, not just taking a message, but with a greater responsibility uh, of a mandate of enforcing the kingdom so an ambassador would be a better term to describe the ap apostle after having understood some of these basic things about an apostle we also saw how in the book of acts the apostles had certain features that they uh, were assigned territory by god now territory is not only a physical space or a region, but also uh, a community of people. So we saw how Peter was called to the Jews when Paul is called to the Gentiles. We also saw how you know they uh, were endowed with supernatural power. The grace of God, grace gifts were given to flow uh, in this call of an apostle. We saw how they are pioneers who uh, had governmental authority to make decisions for the body of Christ. Okay, And they, uh, uh, to a large extent, were concerned about the longevity of the church, the structure, the governmental structure of the church. So they took responsibility in appointing elders, appointing leaders in the church. They were also people who experienced persecution we saw how they became the target of persecution most of the time and uh, they suffered for the sake of the gospel we uh, then looked at the life of apostle paul and we saw how god took him through an entire preparation journey so whenever the call is great the preparation also is very great because god is forming he's shaping a person's uh, character uh, provided they are willing to yield to the work of God in their lives. So Apostle Paul journeyed, we saw how there were 17 silent years in his life, but what God wanted to do through him begin to began to be displayed, right? Once in Acts chapter 13, he was commissioned uh, along with Barnabas. And then you see in the next years that followed uh, apostle paul did incredible uh, feats for the work of god he accomplished mighty things so with this we have a picture of what an apostle is or who an apostle is what apostolic ministry looks like so uh, these classes you could take it up as um, 
trying to form an image right of what the apostolic looks like who an apostle is so bits and pieces we are taking all the information that we have to describe this particular ministry and i've already stated earlier that though you know we're talking about all these features we still cannot box god up and say that an apostle will talk like this walk like this do exactly these things so it's very difficult to uh, you know state that the apostolic looks one it it looks a certain way all the time there can be features of the apostolic ministry but the ministry can be very different right compared to uh, other ministries and i was talking about how in our time apostolic ministry can uh, not just be a field of arts somebody can be very apostolic in the field of business okay so uh if we don't have an open mind then we can miss it so that is why we know the features but we have to be open to all that god is doing and god is very creative in the way uh he establishes you know these things so our minds must be open while we try to identify apostolic or an apostle so now we are at chapter 4 in our notes where we continue to study the function and characteristics okay of uh, apostolic ministry and we could consider these for the present day so even today we these things are applicable um and so we are going to look at uh, the governmental authority that apostles carry character character building we are going to look at spiritual gifts that an apostle uh, or in the apostolic ministry one would need to carry the anointing that they need to carry the ability to pioneer right new ground um uh, working with people establishing kingdom principles kingdom truth kingdom order uh, in uh, and among local churches so these all would be seen in true apostolic ministry so apostles uh how what would they be doing what are they doing right now okay in the present day what are people who have apostolic ministry um doing right now that's the question we are asking so the first thing that they do is to pioneer for the extension of god's kingdom apostle paul is a classic example we find that he was a pioneer pioneer is anyone who breaks ground new ground uh there can be two types of people you know one is where we just manage what we have we make it better we um uh, see growth okay uh, in in what is given to us that's fine fair enough but when we talk about the apostolic uh we are looking at this um uh, you know ability to enter new territory or increase the work of the ministry or the kingdom work by expanding into new things extending into new things and that is how even apostle uh, paul uh, you know described this apostolic ministry let us read two passages and then uh, i'll explain a little bit more so can somebody please pick up from second corinthians chapter 10 verses 13 through 16 and uh, one more person can please read first corinthians 12 and verse 28 Second Corinthians chapter ten verse thirteen to sixteen. Yes, we will not boast about things done outside our area of authority. We will boast only about what has happened within the boundaries of the work God has given us, which includes our working with you. We are not reaching beyond these boundaries when we claim authority over you, as if we have never visited you. 
for we bear the first travel all the way to Corinth with the good news of Christ. Nor do we boast in keeping credit for the work someone else has done. Instead, we hope that your faith will grow so that the boundaries of our work among you will be extended. Then we will be able to go and preach the good news in other places far beyond you where no one else is working. Then there will be no question of our boasting about work done in someone else's territory. As the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Could uh, another person please read the next uh, scripture here? That is 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 28. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rosalind. So uh, as we can see here, the first passage which Jeffina read, it's talking about the limits in NKJV. It says, uh, verse 13, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially includes you. And then he goes on to talk about that sphere. In uh, end of verse 15, he says that as your faith is increased, we shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere. Uh, then verse 16, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. So we notice that they are already appointed. Okay, in this case, Apostle Paul, what is he saying? He's saying that uh, they are extending right they're extending their work into the places where god has called them so sphere is the responsibility that god has given us let's say you know god has given us uh, a community of people that we are responsible for or god has given us a nation that we are responsible for or god has given us as i was stating you know one of the seven mountains of influence which we are responsible for so he's saying that the, the apostolic has entered into that sphere, okay? And he's also saying that I won't try to enter any other sphere. So as the Lord appoints the person, what are they doing? They're extending into those spheres that God is giving to them, okay? Uh, and last time I told you, consider this as, you know, there's this thick forest and uh, uh, we are going to make use of the land now. But the thick forest is what has been given to us. So there are weeds, there are trees, there's, uh, you know, a lot a lot of wild things growing. So one has to break into this new territory, make way, make a path, then, you know, begin to clean up the place. Uh, so it, it's about entering the place and then causing the place to thrive. So all that is what the apostolic does. So Paul is saying that, one sphere has been given, we have entered that sphere, we are working there, and we don't try to enter, you know, another person's sphere. So being led by God. Uh, and in 1 Corinthians 12, 28, it says something like, you know, God has given first the apostle. Okay, first the apostle. So what is the meaning of first the apostle? Does it mean that the apostle is better than all other uh, ministry offices because some people take it that way. So there is an hierarchy, right? Like we respect the pastor, but we respect the prophet more. Or we respect the prophet, but we respect the apostle more. Uh, is that the correct way of looking at this uh, uh, scripture? Well, when we go to the Greek, that word first, there is proton. And proton uh, simply means first in time, okay? First in time. It also means first in order, rank, importance. However, the meaning that we are going to uh, assign to this first is pioneer. 
a pioneer is the one who goes into uncharted territory and they they uh, take over okay uh, so it's a it's a tough task they are the ones who go first like uh, you have uh, all these expeditions right where where people go find a new place they are the first ones to reach there so proton first in time they went there so does it make them the most important person not really because yes they went first but then uh we need a lot of other people to come in and you know a lot of work, other work needs to get done so that's how we are going to look at it so pioneer when you say proton the the term that needs to come to our minds is pioneer the person who goes first and makes way as pioneers what do these apostles do there's going to be a little bit of overlap you know as i talk you might find that i'm coming back to the same uh, topic a little later on uh, but yeah just bear with me um, so while we talk about pioneers just to explain to us in the spiritual terms what are those new things that uh, the apostle is going to pioneer revelation okay uh, or understanding of the truth of god's word there is something known as the present truth which apostle paul writes about i won't go into the details of it what is the present truth are we changing scripture are we changing doctrines no everything remains the same but in a given time holy spirit breathes on those same words and brings it to life so that something is accomplished through that uh, through that word which has always existed in lo in the logos for us okay so that is the meaning of the present truth or whenever we say something new truth revelation it doesn't mean that we are overriding scripture but it simply means that the holy spirit is breathing upon the scriptures in such a way that a dimension which we probably did not know or a dimension which we probably did not understand fully is now coming alive so apostles through apostles god does that then they pioneer how else do they pioneer they expand into new territories so you would find people with the apostolic calling they are very uh, <clears throat> very bold they try new things you know they uh, they are the kind the, who will be brave to try and fail they don't mind you know so that's the kind of uh, a call anointing which they carry new territories people may not have even thought that this can be done but you know they they give it a shot they move it so they pioneer in this way new territories so new truth revelation new territories uh, they are also about leading leading from the front so what happens is because they are proton they enter first people may be scared of taking on certain things right like can we really do this can we uh, really run the ministry like this but an apostolic anointing will step in it will lead the way so when people notice that the ap apostle is actually doing it and he's moving forward in this new territory it gives the others a lot of confidence and they begin to step in and you know they begin to recognize what god is actually doing so this is the manner in which the whole pioneering uh, extending of the kingdom of god happens through the apostle um yeah so pioneering is one thing right so today uh, in the present times when we see an anointing on an individual or a ministry which is pioneering into new territories we could look at it and say this is apostolic okay so this is how you recognize the apostolic in the current times then uh, apostles the apostolic lays lasting foundations so what does it mean lasting foundations is a kind of work which will carry on for a long time to come so generally you know what we notice is in the apostolic um we find that uh, new churches are planted okay new people are uh, god leads them to identify new people groom new people nurture new people and plant new churches so today when we see ministries where 
churches are being planted right in in and through that ministry many churches it's growing uh that's apostolic actually that many new churches are being planted leaders are being groomed so then what happens you see if it's only about one pastor and his congregation uh it is subject to the lifetime of you know people in that congregation if they are good at investing into the lives of the younger people then great you know it will carry on for a little longer but when you talk about the apostolic what what happens is uh, under that anointing many ministries churches are planted so then we are actually talking about a, a work that pro, that can sustain way longer than just you know uh, uh, two generations or something but the apostolic in that sense is forward looking and it lays strong foundations okay so that's another feature so when we look at uh, ministries that have that are planting uh, strong churches uh, raising up leaders we would say minister, that ministry is apostolic and a leader who is able to do that we would say they are apostolic or maybe they are even called into the office of an apostle okay what else uh, do they do they execute divine plans okay, as the lord gives them ideas as the lord gives them um, uh, you know uh, that creative ability they implement these ideas and they impact the regions for the gospel so uh, you know we could say something like as i was saying in the last class technology right something god gives an idea with technology okay la launch this or uh, launch the program and then you begin to notice that in that period of time a lot of people are impacted because technology was harnessed so uh, that impartation of divine plans and uh, you know creative ideas is also a feature of the apostolic so you might find that apostolic ministries are always on the cutting edge right of things they're trying new things they are trying um, uh, you know they they are developing their their uh, skills and abilities uh, they want to get better at you know doing stuff uh, and whatever they are doing is making a difference it's impacting people they're doing things in a new way and it's actually impacting the lives of people uh, so the important part is one is yes god gives them creative plans uh, but the apostles are generally the kind who push for these things to get done so they're very good at execution they get the plan also they move in they get their team energized and uh, they get things done so that's another feature of the apostles because their goal is we got to impact you know cities nations uh, leave behind a legacy so you see they're thinking in a completely different way they're not thinking just oh me my church my uh, uh, you know my building my people the vision is so much larger impact um even cities nations execute the plans and purposes of god so that's the way in which they actually work uh let's also read now first corinthians 3 and verse 10 could somebody kindly read this for us first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 first corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 and yes. god has revealed them to us his spirit but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god uh, rosalyn please excuse me i i i meant 3 verse 10 did i say 2 okay sorry ma'am yeah according to the grace of god which was given to me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. Yes, that's right. Thank you so much. So, as you can notice, look at the way Paul is thinking. He's not just running the program, right? We should have a church service. 
we need a lot of people that's in the moment but he's saying according to the grace of god which was given to me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation so he has done certain things you know spiritually through prayer through teaching of the word you know by by uh, uh, selecting leaders appointing leaders so he has done certain things in such a way and we know that uh, apostle paul is also one of the founding apostles okay because uh, he is involved in the writing of doctrine which now we don't have founding apostles so he was involved in all these things he has built a foundation he's saying wisely i laid the foundation and he is actually okay with the thought of the work continuing he is not threatened or insecure by somebody else taking over see because it's about the work it's about the work so he's saying i laid the foundation and another builds on it but le let each one take heed how he builds on it so very smart uh, very wise uh, very um, you know uh, thinking long term looking into the future and foreseeing the possibilities that is an apostolic mindset and that is how paul is saying uh, the work should be done so even today these would be the features when as ministries or apostolic people when we do something we want to leave behind a legacy okay just doing church and being happy with it that's not apostolic we can even do church creatively but still it's not apostolic but when we leave behind a legacy lasting foundations we can talk about you know these things a little later also so what do these things mean what happens is long after we are gone the the kingdom work can continue people can still receive from it and thrive and grow that is apostolic okay so that kind of a ministry that kind of a leader we would say they are apostolic okay now what else let's just see the apostles a uh, guarded doctrine so even today uh, you know if we study the scriptures we notice that in the last days it says last days is after jesus is you know uh, death burial resurrection ascension so from then the last days have started but we are in the last of the last days and as we study um epistles of peter as we study epistles of uh, apostle john what do they say in the last days there will be apostates there will be people who will come up with um you know heretical teachings so there will be all every wind of doctrine paul talks about that don't be swayed by every wind of doctrine so there are going to be many wrong teachings there are going to be uh, deviations from the standard of god's word but you know what the apostolic does the apostolic is very keen on doctrine so it will not that anointing will not let you stray from the truth of god's word so acts 15 we discussed that remember that uh, when uh, there was this teaching about circumcision um, as a necessity for salvation among the gentiles uh, paul barnabas they were so angry when they heard this kind of a teaching and uh, they were angry enough to take it to the apostles in jerusalem and all the leaders they all sat together and they came with came out with a conclusion saying that no this is not correct salvation is salvation it's by grace right through faith so uh, gentiles don't have to be circumcised it's a cultural thing if they want they can be but they don't need to be circumcised in order for them to be saved so what happened they preserved the truth of god's word thank god they fought for it back then otherwise till today anybody who becomes a believer you know uh, the men they would need to be circumcised because there was no conclusion isn't it drawn uh, back in the first century so thank god for apostles because they stood up for the right doctrine and when they stood up for the right doctrine we are, we are following along uh, the same thing so even today the apostolic is keen when we find a lie 
uh, of of the enemy or a deceptive teaching of the enemy the apostolic will go against it to safeguard the doctrine protect the people from wrong teaching so that is a feature you know when you also read about um, in the uh, 1st Corinthians chapter 11 when uh, Paul instructs them about the holy communion right how should you take the holy he's very categorical he tells them look do it like this don't do it like that they instruct the apostolic anointing carries that with them they're very particular so when it comes to let's say an apostolic ministry you would find that there is an emphasis on going by the word going by the doctrine to not you know dilute the doctrine in any way when you look at apostles or you notice somebody as an apostle they are you know passionate about the doctrine anything that goes a little off here and there they are not the kinds who will tolerate it okay so i'm just giving you all these features so when you notice ministries or when you notice people you can you can figure out oh okay this this looks this sounds very apostolic okay so they give instructions they say you got to do this you you shouldn't be doing this uh, and, and they make things clearer for the people to follow okay they, they don't, they, uh, and we'll see later on, sometimes even the personality of apostles is, they don't mind, they're very bold. If, if people uh, judge them for who they are, also they don't care, but they have to say what is correct. Okay, so that also tends to be the general way apostles come across. Uh, so they're very, very keen about doctrine which is a great thing. The church actually needs people like this to protect them. Uh, then what else? What are some of the current day features that, that we can um, consider? They are, the apostolic is keen on establishing people in the word of God. So when we saw uh, Paul ministering to uh, the people, to the Ephesian church, you know, he says, he makes a statement like this while talking to the leaders that uh, I, the whole, I built you up in the whole council of the word of God. So uh, that is, again, something that the apostolic would be interested in. Why? Because we already said lasting work. How can lasting work happen unless the people are built up strong? And how can you have leaders unless the people have the word of God working in their lives? So apostolic ministries, apostles will put a lot of emphasis on the word of God uh, and, and teach the word of God. And it says here, whole council, right? Acts 20 verse 32, whole council. What is whole council? The well-rounded word of God. It won't be these days we find that People can take one statement or one truth from the uh, Bible and don't study it fully, but make a doctrine out of it. So uh, there are terms such as, you know, pet doctrine, like somebody can just hold on to grace, grace teaching, grace, 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 prosperity, 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 prosperity. So what happens? It's, it's like an excess because it's not been thoroughly looked at from every side in scripture. But when we talk about the whole counsel of God's word, there is grace, but there is also truth. Right? There's a balance because Jesus Christ, he, that's how he was revealed, full of grace, full of truth. So you can't have one without the other. That would be a balanced thing when somebody is teaching grace as well as teaching truth. Now, same way, prosperity, yes, wonderful. But what about stewardship, isn't it? What about, uh, you know, contentment, enduring under trials? So there is a good balance when you touch all these subjects. So when it comes to the apostolic, they are keen in building up the people of God in the whole counsel of God and not necessarily just some pet doctrines here and there. Okay. Then, uh, apostles activate and equip believers for spiritual ministry. Um, that is understood because every fivefold ministry office has this responsibility: build up the 
believers, you know, cause them to stand up on their own. Let them also serve in the kingdom of God. Uh, so uh, that is another feature. So they're grooming believers. They're not just there to build only the church or their ministry, but build the people. So that is another feature of the apostolic. Uh, now, apostolic ministries or leaders have this outlook that they must be spiritual fathers. Okay, uh, So along the same lines of nurturing people, preparing people for spiritual ministry, having a, a lasting foundation, what should they do? They need pillars in the church. See, one post, uh, if there's only one pole, what can you do on that? You can hang one flag, that's all. Okay, But if you have many poles, you can actually maybe make a roof on it. You can build something if there are many poles or pillars. So the house of God or the church should be a place where we have many pillars, strong pillars, not just the pastor, not just the leader, but many leaders should be groomed. So the apostolic anointing, apostolic ministries are keen on raising strong leaders. You will have more than one leader in the ministry. And the apostle will look at developing leaders, just like Apostle Paul. Think about uh, his leadership. He called Timothy a son. Uh, he had people like Titus different people whom he was grooming under him so that they could take on the work of the ministry. And that is the mindset, apostolic mindset. So eventually, you know, uh, you would find that an apostle, whether they call the, the uh, leaders as sons or whether the leaders call them as father, it's understood in the spiritual sense this apostle is developing spiritual sons and daughters and has become a spiritual father or mother. Okay, So that is the way in which apostolic ministries actually move forward, developing leaders, ordaining leaders. Uh, ordaining leaders is commissioning them, you know, giving them responsibilities and affirming it to the church. So uh, remember Act 6, they needed volunteers. So they picked the volunteers. It was very clear cut for the church. Here are seven men. This is what uh, you know they are going to do. Uh, uh, so you see how they are ordaining them. They are going to serve in. They are going to serve food. So administrative duties. It was very well defined. But when you take up, let's say, somebody like Timothy, spiritual responsibilities. We have Timothy. He will head up the church. He will be, you know, uh, overseer, shepherd, bishop of the church. So they find leaders. They go by what God wants for those leaders. They define their responsibility. They commission them. They back them up. So that's how apostles actually work, right? So they, uh, so if you see ministries like this, where you you have uh, leaders defined roles, uh, they are supported to do their work, their commission, and this keeps happening. Our first thing is, oh, looks like a very apostolic ministry. And see, whenever we see these features in one single church, it's a little difficult to conclude that it's apostolic. But when you see that you know the ministry is actually growing very large, and uh, over the years this has been the trend, then it's a little easier for us to look at that ministry and say, oh, OK, this is apostolic. OK, so uh, leadership, leadership, grooming them, uh, putting them to uh, take up their responsibilities. All this are features of apostolic. OK, um, uh, the apostles establish order, similar to how I said they are very uh, keen on guarding the doctrine. They will not tolerate any deviation of the doctrine. Okay, now, so that is in the area of doctrine. Now, coming to order in the church, what order, you know, the way things should be done, the the uh, way things should be sustained in, in the uh, church. So they will establish order, right, uh, in the church. Again, through the word of God. For example, if you again go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where communion, um, 
Paul is telling the people how to have communion. Don't, if you want to eat, eat at home and come. Okay. But when you come here, you come with reverence. So anything goes, that wouldn't work in the apostolic uh, anointing. The apostles will be keen about establishing some order. Things have to be done in this way so that it's beneficial for the uh, entire network of churches or you know a network of people connected to the uh, apostolic ministry so along with establishing order uh, they will also manage crisis obviously something can go wrong right so when these things go wrong like when you look at the ministry of apostle paul here and there he addresses Right in the Corinthian church, there was this man who fell into sexual sin. So uh, now Paul has to address that matter. So he gives them instructions. Okay, you do this. You first, uh, you know, you uh, let him know that what he has done is wrong. Then he says, now you affirm your love to this man. So there are clear cut instructions uh, or uh, operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We can practice anyhow. They are gifts. God pours it out on us. But no, First Corinthians chapter 14, instructions. If you have a word of prophecy, prophesy one by one. It is better that you prophesy than you speak in tongues when you know a person comes into the church who, who wouldn't understand what you're saying. So what is, what is going on? Instructions, maintain order, structure. Unless there is somebody who does this for the church, what do you think will happen? Chaos, utter chaos. So the apostolic anointing carries with it this desire and ability to establish order within the church, among churches, right? If there's a network of churches, even there, let's say the churches are growing, they're thriving, many new people are coming into the church, but the apostolic will go into the order also and say, hey, how is all this happening? I hope the doctrine is correct. I hope you know they are, they are honoring uh, the work of the spirit. I hope they are honoring the word. I hope they are honoring. So they look into the orderliness of worship as well. So that is part of the apostolic anointing. So are you all with me? Are you all OK or are you all getting bored? <laughs> Good pastor. Okay, nice. Good Fine. Pastor. Okay, good, good, good. So you're getting a grasp of things. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's go in for a break. Ten minutes. We'll come back. We'll uh, try to understand a few more features of the apostolic ministry. Okay, so hopefully uh, I can finish some of these key things today. And uh, I will need to take another um, class next week, I think. And But with that, we, we should be able to close off. Okay, so let's go for a break now. I'll see you at uh, 10 a.m. Thank you.